Good evening, nerd fam, and welcome back to Stanford University. My name's Savannah Peterson, and it's been an absolute honor to broadcast live here from the Data in Women's Science Worldwide Annual Event. It's also a part of our International Women's Day celebration today. We've had nine guests on the show, and I'm going to give you a quick recap of those, as well as some of the highlights of the day, but just a few facts to ground us all in exactly what WIDS is up to. WIDS started in 2015. This is their ninth year. It started as a one-day summit here at Stanford, and now it's up to over 200 events around the world with over 150,000 participants in 160 countries. That's in less than a decade. Extraordinarily impressive. They've also got a datathon, a podcast. They have the WIDS Academy. They have a next-gen outreach program, and they have an uplink platform for career mentoring and a lot of different resources. If you haven't checked out the women in data science community, I highly encourage you to do so. That goes for both men and women there, and any gender. There is always room for allyship across the board. I have to say, this is my first women in data science event. And right away when I arrived this morning, I could tell that the energy was different. There is this incredibly palpable, calm excitement that we've all gotten to feel today and a true culture of empowerment. There isn't the stress or the ego or the salesy side that we sense in a lot of different conferences, but rather an exchange of information, an opportunity to celebrate and to show off the research that a lot of the brilliant people here are doing, and moments of synergy where organizations both at the government level, the industry level, and at the academic level can intersect to help develop the solutions for our AI and data specialist future. It has been an absolutely thrilling day. We started off with Harshita, who is a machine learning student at my alma mater, the University of Washington. Very proud Husky. She talked about what it was like to be the first person and the first woman from her family to come to the United States to pursue her academic career. Extraordinarily inspiring. She does a million different things, quite frankly. Definitely worthwhile to watch that interview to understand how to prioritize and how to think about education and also how not to be afraid to fearlessly go after your dreams. Harshita, thank you so much again for being on the show. You were absolutely brilliant. Following her was another absolute knockout, Radhika. Radhika is with the Stanford Angels. She's also a part of the UN, the, the SDG fund, and as well as looking at those goals that the whole world is going after. It's, it was such an interesting conversation to talk both about how academics look at this as well as how policy is made at the highest level, how we're actually building bridges around the globe with organizations like the UN and smaller orgs within different nations uh, across, across the globe. One of the things that I really loved and took away from her was the role of inclusion in sustainability, that inclusion is a part of sustainability, and it's not necessarily something I've heard phrased that way. Radhika was just an absolutely fantastic guest, and thank you for being on the show. Following her up was another power-packed addition to our morning, Mariana. Mariana is a data science student down in Lima, Peru, who is also working on a senior project doing Peruvian sign language. Now, we've done a little bit of work with the deaf and hard of hearing at CNCF and KubeCon here on theCUBE, but I was really impressed with Mariana's detail and nuance in, in understanding as a person who does not use sign language as their primary form of communication, the difference and, and the need for Peruvian based sign language versus say what we would do here in America, which is have ASL cover everything. Her insights were fascinating. It was great to hear how her school program is so new down in Lima, Peru, and also how supportive the academic environment is around a lot of the work that she, she is doing. After lunch, we kicked it off with an absolute out of this world bang, pun intended, with Sam at Starfish Space. They are working on satellites that service other satellites and machines. They are the cleanup crew, if you will, the dishwasher of space to a degree, and, and going to help proactively go out and get space, do, space debris while also autonomously serving a lot of the systems already in the sky. She was a fascinating person to talk to. Space, obviously a huge part of high performance computing as well as data science, and this space nerd was particularly excited for that conversation today. Following her, we went deep into cybersecurity, and we talked to Nicole at Darktrace. Nicole is an industry veteran. She has been around the block with this, and she had a great analysis of the threat landscape as it sits today, as well as some of the trends and challenges that folks are, are experiencing and customers and, and companies are experiencing as attackers and hackers leverage AI tools to try and penetrate 
our, our systems as they are. Fantastic interview, incredibly insightful, probably the most technically in-depth conversation we had specifically about AI cybersecurity. You don't want to miss it. After that, we had Chen and Bing from ASML, the semiconductor company, with an absolutely fascinating conversation about academic versus industry. They've both worked in both sides of the sector and have come together not only to help create some of the most complex chip materials and machines for making semiconductors in the world, but also to help empower the women at ASML. Absolutely fantastic conversation. Then we had Kim, who is at the Stanford Human Trafficking Data Lab. This was one of our more serious, but also more in-depth conversations about how Stanford and her team, as well as their partners around the globe, are leveraging data and data science to combat human trafficking. Now, human trafficking isn't just traditional forms of slavery in the way that we think, though it is predicted that 27 to 40 million people are currently enslaved against their will right now around the world, a very significant population. The work that the Human Trafficking Lab is doing is, is absolutely imperative. But we also learned that there are 17 factors that contribute to whether or not someone is being trafficked and we, how we can use AI not only to prevent that trafficking, but also detect when trafficking patterns and behaviors are starting to appear in various regions or episodes or communities. Absolutely outstanding and important work coming out of Kim. Very powerful and, and moving conversation that we had there. Pulling, coming around to the end of our afternoon, we had Hannah from Pinterest. What an interesting conversation about the friendly corner of the internet as they talked about being Pinterest and her experience as a data scientist. She's worked at Airbnb, she's now at Pinterest, and how she thinks about curating the right kind of data and making sure that, that the friendliest corner on the internet maintains its role as the friendliest corner on the internet. Also some great pro tips if you are curating your own Pinterest boards for your wedding or for your home interiors. Really enjoyed talking to Hannah. And then to close us out, we had Amiko. And Amiko has had quite the journey. She started as a researcher in the lab in studying, as she would say, pond scum, quite literally, studying uh, how uh, on the biology side of things. And then later in life, she pivoted to being a consultant, a data science consultant, consultant with V2 Solutions, helping companies transform on, on the AI side completely outside of the lab. So working in spaces like real estate. And just had a, had a super interesting journey uh, that she was able to share with us that I, that I am very excited about. One of the things I hope you'll all tune into, in addition to each one of these individuals in, individually, interviews individually, is we will be going through and pulling out some highlights. Key questions I asked all of our guests today were what, are you, what is your advice for young women starting out, or women of any age, starting out in data science, and what is your advice for allies? Now, I guarantee that in those answers from these brilliant guests, there is something for each and every single one of you to learn, and I hope that you'll take a nice hard look at some of those highlights, because I know sitting in this chair all day long, I learned many things from our very inspiring guests and I could not be more grateful. I want to give a really special shout out to our entire production team for everything that they did today. It's all men here behind the camera supporting this leading lady on camera. And I just want to say that you are all fantastic allies today and every single day. And thank you for tolerating this sassy bay and all that she does. Shout out to John Furrier and Dave Vellante for founding the Cube and for empowering folks like me here to be on this stage. They've also have been big contributors and collaborators to the Women in Data Science event over the years. I know, I know the Cube has been here for multiple years. I feel very lucky to be the one here sitting in the desk. Final reminder that only 20% of students in data science are women and only 10% of decision makers in data science roles at big companies are women. These are numbers that we should all be passionate about changing. We are the ones who can help combat the bias in AI. We are the ones who can help close the skill gap and we are the ones that can be more inclusive in our organizations. The Women in Data Science organization, uh, worldwide organization has a goal of 30 by 30. That's to get 30% of the roles in data science filled by women by 2030. It makes me a little bit sad that we have to do that still at this stage, but I am very inspired and proud of the organization and the efforts they're making here, of the community that they've attracted, and the work that every single person in this room is doing to help achieve that goal. May we be even closer to 30 by 30 by the time I'm sitting here next year when we come back to Women in Data Science at Stanford University. My name's Savannah Peterson. Thank you so much for tuning 
tuning in to this special event coverage from theCUBE. Final shout out to all of the wonderful, brilliant women in my life, to my girls, to my tripod, to my mom, to Amy, to everyone who has upheld me in the last three years as well as the last 20 years of my career as a woman in tech. I would not be sitting in this chair if it wasn't for each and every one of you. And I feel that in my chest, it makes me a little emotional to say that. So thank you all. I hope you have a beautiful day. Happy International Women's Day. Please tell a woman how brilliant, how beautiful, and how powerful she is before you go to bed tonight. Again, my name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech coverage.